Hello, my friends. How are we doing today? That is good. So today, we're going to be going over um, the Lovecraft video I promised you to have up yesterday, which is probably... This is probably one of the biggest... Um, stories of Lovecrafts that <clears throat> lock so many things together. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, but before we do that, let me just say that um, I need you guys to remember that Sunday, figuring the mundane, um, we're going to have the um, ominous thunder outside. Um, we're going to have the... Uh, the launch party Sunday because um, this campaign is going live Sunday for 30 days and if you want to be reminded that it's coming if you go over to this link which will be in the description below um, the Indiegogo link it's like the second link on there um, in the description uh, you could do this watch the video right here and then scroll down, sign up, and then this way you will be notified when it launches. And again, on um, Sunday I'm going to be doing some giveaways. I went and picked up a bunch of crap um, yesterday when I was doing some more of my adulting type stuff. And um, I went and got my car tags. Um, I took my kid to Best Buy to get stuff um, and some other some other stuff, but um, yeah. So that's that. Fingering the mundane this Sunday. Don't forget. And now back to our regularly scheduled program of the shadow over In's mouth. Or Innsmouth. Okay, so this story, again, if you haven't read it yet, you could go to weirdmass.com and read it. Um, this story, man. Okay, so if you remember the last video I did, I talked about how um, Lovecraft has this like feel when he's writing that everything's kind of like... Um, a report almost and this feels more like a travel log than probably at least the first half of this feels like a travel log like um, I know he was doing a lot of travel writing for himself um, around this point in his life and it shows it totally shows um, but basically, we have this guy who is in college, and he's going to take an antiquarian tour of New England, as one does, um, because he is interested in the towns and the architecture of his beautiful New England. Um, so, right there, it's like, and again, this might have been a thing that people did all the fucking time back in the 20s, um, but, like, I wouldn't know, because I am not current day in the 20s, well, I am, but a hundred years after the fact, so, um, this whole thing's weird, but then he, like, starts talking to this guy, and he's like, oh, tell me about this town, Innsmouth, all right, well, he's not Cockney, he's actually, like, a Bostonian, or something. But dude, this guy gives this dude so much fucking information. It's kind of like one of those things where like you ask your friend like, "Oh, what'd you do today?" Oh, well, I woke up and then I thought, "Man, I should get out of bed." And I put one foot down and then the next foot down and I thought, "Where are my shoes?" Hmm, my feet are a bit chilly. I should put some shoes on. So I scanned the floor and then found my shoes and then realized that one of the shoes was tied in a knot and my fingers are so stubby and I just cut my nails the day before. I couldn't untie the knot. And it's almost like that, like, 
ridiculous, like, over-explanation of anything you could ever want to know. Except, like, the very important stuff. <clears throat> so, he is like, oh, yeah, I'll go to Innsmouth. That sounds like a fun little um, jaunt for my trip. And so he waits for the dilapidated bus for Innsmouth. And the bus driver, <clears throat> it's so funny because he never just says, like, these dudes have, like, a fishy demeanor. You know, he's like, they have, like, bulbous eyes that don't blink and a flat nose and their lips are really, like, outstretched and down and um, they're kind of scaly but kind of slippery looking and all this other shit, and their hands are all weird and big, and their their feet look huge. Like, I don't even know where someone buys shoes that big, and all this stuff. <clears throat> so, we go through, <laughs> he, he gets on the bus, and the dude's, like, all pissed off at him, he thinks, because he might, he's like, yeah, he was kind of giving me a dirty look, or he might just be ugly. So, it's like, you don't know, but he doesn't say that, obviously, but that's just, like, my thing. And um, so he goes to Innsmouth, and he finds another dude that um, is not from Innsmouth, who's just like a normal dude working in a shop. And um, he tells him some things of like where he shouldn't go and where it might be interesting to go look at and who to talk to and who not to talk to. And so he finds out all this shit about the town, like it used to be like a Baptist town or something, and um, but they were like starving. <laughs> And, um, so then, like, the leader of the church, like, switched religions on him, and it became the Esoteric Order of Dagon, which is fucking badass. And, um, so all this shit, and then he, he he's just, like, uncovering shit, and then he finds this dude who, um, like, is, like, a normal-looking dude, and if he, like, bribes him with booze, um, he might be able to tell him a bunch of shit. So he finds this guy, gives him some booze, and the dude, like, fucking tells him every horrific fucking event that has ever fucking happened. And, um, it's just, like, fuck. And he's like, oh, well, shit, I still got time. Like, even though this guy's, like, having a complete nervous breakdown, um, I still have time to go by the... Um, hotel and get my shit and run over to catch the bus to get the fuck out of this place and so he goes and he does that everyone's staring at him he gets on the bus and then the bus driver gets up and in his like fishy froggish tone says the bus is not going to run tonight it's damaged and it'll take until tomorrow to fix it you should stay at the hotel called the gill man um, which is just classic. I love that. Um, and then this whole bit. <sighs> this whole bit is really fucking cool because, um, it's so funny that we just did a Conan story the other day where he went to his room and, um, was basically, like, locked in. He goes up to his room, and there's no lock on the door. Like, there's... It's just open, like, where the lock used to be. And so he sees that there's a lock on this other door, so he takes that lock off and puts it on the door because he's, like, just that capable, and he's got a little screwdriver on him. And he starts hearing people trying to come in, and he's like, oh, shit... And he looks out the window, and he's like, oh, I could jump to that roof, but not from this window. I'd have to go to the next window over. So he um, goes th into the next room, like, through the doors that join rooms together, while people are, like, banging on the doors trying to get in. And he goes into this room, and there's no fucking window. It's, like, bricked up or something. And he's like, oh, fuck. So then he has to go to the next room. And um, do all this shit. And this whole bit is really exciting. Like, this whole thing. Um, like, basically once he gets in the hotel, this story kicks into fucking high gear. Like, ridiculously. And to be fair, this is more of like um, a novella 
like, I think it's almost 30,000 words. Like, we're, we're basically in 1920s novel territory here. So, he jumps onto the roof and he's, like, running from all these guys. And there's tons of these, like, um, fishy people after him and all this stuff. And, um, he gets away, but then he sees that, like, out in the water that, um, because there is a civilization of old ones under this little island that's not too far off the coast, and he sees masses of these, like, deep ones walking up the shore and croaking and like the bark a reap, talking and stuff, um... So, like, every good Lovecraft hero, like, when shit gets rough, they get scared and faint. So, um, and again, this is probably why a lot of people don't like Lovecraft, because his heroes are fucking awful. So the dude faints, and when he wakes up, he's fine, and it's, like, the next day. And he's like, oh, I guess I'll just, uh run over to Arkham and let the authorities know that the world's about to be taken over by a bunch of fishmen. And, um, so he does. And the funniest thing about this, when the story starts, he's like, oh yeah, so, um, a few years ago, I instigated this investigation that, like, had, like, basically the entire town arrested, and then they disappeared, and then a submarine blew up some ancient city under um devil's rock or whatever and um so like he's like <laughs> yeah so if you heard about all this stuff it was in the news all over the place you know um that was me because of what i did and so let me tell you what i did then this story when you think it's over it takes a fucking turn that you are not expecting at all and maybe some more wise fuckers would um, have this like, oh yeah, I can totally see this coming. But it, it reminds me of the festival in this sense. But like, so he starts, you know, researching his family tree as you do, you know, when you're about to be attacked by monsters and you're freaking out about it. And um, he's back in Toledo where he's safe. And, um, Long story short, he finds out that he's actually a fucking descendant of, um, oh, my mustache is driving me crazy right now, guys. Let me curl it up here. Get some 1920s swag going on here. Um, or 1820s, Jesus Christ. Um, I need to trim this bad boy. So, um, yeah, long story <laughs> Long story short, as I said, um, he finds out that he's related to um, the Marsh family, um, who basically started the esoteric order of Dagon and all this shit. So um, he gets a gun because he's going to kill himself because his uncle killed himself once he found out. And um, he realized one of his cousins is like a full-fledged fish dude in some asylum. So he's going to go break him out um, because he can't he can't force himself to kill himself. He can't do it. So he um, goes and breaks his cousin. He's going to go break his cousin out and then they're going to go live happily ever after in the underwater cities and um, bring praise to Cthulhu and Rallier and all this other shit. So um, it's fucked. It's really fucked. Like, it just, um, what turns, what starts out is just a very typical antiquarian tour of New England, um, turns into a night of horror and, um, a revelation of something so bizarre and perverse that one would go mad. So that's Lovecraft, and that is The Shadow of Ransmith. And so, like, we, we're reading about Dagon, we're reading about Cthulhu, like, we're getting, um, like, the greatest hits of Lovecraft shit. And this is the only um, story of his that was uh, 
published in book form during his lifetime because the shunned house um, was never bound during his lifetime, so he never got to see that. But um, this story was supposed, like, he wrote this story like five or six different times, like within a month. And didn't like it at all every time he wrote it. And um, August Derleth convinced him to send it to Weird Tales. And Farnsworth Wright was like, this is a really cool story, but I have no idea how to serialize this. There's, like, no, like, breaks. Like, there's no, like, natural breaks in this story. And to be fair, I don't fucking agree with that. Like, I think there are um, at least two places where you can break this story. Um, would it read well serialized? Probably not, but you could do it. Um, but then after uh, Lovecraft's death, um, and after Farnsworth Wright was gone from Weird Tales, uh, I think 42, they um, reprinted it. So, <clears throat> so there you go. Shadow over fucking in's mouth, um, and a day of rain and thunder over here. And next time on this Cthulhu Mythos thing, we are going to do the shadow out of time. Another fucking shadow story. Jesus fucking Christ, these shadows are everywhere. So, um, hopefully sometime today, um, I will put the shadow, um, out of time. Is that what it's called? The shadow out of time? Why do I always get, like, I second guess myself. Um, it'll be up on Weird Mask. Um, also, Weird Mask 25 will be available on August 13th. Um, a big fatty issue. So, um, we'll be doing more stuff about that, um, in the coming weeks. And, I will talk to you later.